Welcome back to another UFC fight prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the main card fights for UFC fight night, Hermanson versus Vittori. So without further ado, let's get to our first fight on the main card. So in our first fight on the main card, we have in the featherweight division, Mavsar Evloev versus Nate Landwehr. So look at this one right here. Um, let me look at Nate Landwehr first. So let me, before that, let me get to the height and reach. As a matter of fact, I'm not doing height reach or none of that stuff because I don't think it's too significant in this one. I don't think age is too significant in this one. How I see this fight right here? I see Landwehr is a fighter that's, he's well-rounded, he's solid, he's skilled. He's definitely a fighter. He's not a guy that just trying to be an athlete. He's not trying to be pretty out there. He's a fighter. He's going to come to bring it. He's not scared to get hit. He's definitely not scared to hit you. He's going to dish it out. He's going to take it and dish it out. He's a fighter. He's not a pretty fighter. He's a, a fighter, fighter. Like he's a fighter's fighter. He goes out there, don't cause him to win. And it's been paying off for him pretty well in his career is he's been in the UFC. Like he, or he got into the UFC and has success over in the um, Russian league circuits for a good while. And was able to, like I said, be a lot of solid grapplers over there. So Landwehr is a style, like I said, it, it works for him. But going against Evloev, I just think Evloev is just better than every year. Like say Landwehr has style where he has the scramble ability and the wrestling defense and offense to deal with a lot of good wrestlers who maybe not have the best striking and he outstrike strike them. Or if they're maybe a little bit more technical to him, like the fact that he just don't caution the win, he can just outwork them and, and you know bring them to his pace and then he'll beat them at, at his own style. He'll make them fight his fight and beat them at that. But as long as Evloev, Evloev is too experienced, too skilled, the better wrestler, the better striker, definitely much better defense. Landwehr doesn't even have a exist. Like defense doesn't even exist in the world of Landwehr. I don't think he even knows what it means to defend. He just all offense for the most part. You can hit him with the kitchen sink. He won't. Uh, he, he won't dodge it. But so um, like I said, Evloev is not no um green green fighter. He's not no fighter that's a one dimensional. I think like I said, better in every area. I don't think I'm going to go in and just take Landwehr down and lay on him because like I said, Landwehr could get back to his feet real well, real quick. That's not the issue for him. But like I said, point-wise, that's going to help. And it's going to give different looks, which is going to allow Evlev to open up more in his striking, which is, I think he'll have advantage. Speed-wise, have advantage. Technique-wise, have advantage. Defensively, definitely an advantage. The fact that Landwehr's not defending an advantage. So I just see um, Evlev just being sharp, being clean out there, not falling to Landwehr's game and just picking him apart through three rounds. Mixing in the takedowns and just outscoring him. I think Landwehr could make it interesting, but the technique is just going to be a little bit too much in the skill, the fight IQ of Evloev just coast to a decision on, but not really coasting. Like I said, he's going to go out there and be pushing the pace, but it'll be hard to put Landwehr away. But he's going to be able to beat him to a decision pretty cleanly, 30 27 across the board. So in this one, I got Mavsar Evloev via decision. Now, on to our next fight, we have in the light heavyweight division. Roman Dolids versus John Allen Arte. So look at this one right here. Um, Arte got some good size on him. But really looking at Arte, um, he lost his contender series fight to just about the worst fighter that's come through there recently. Well, I mean, not even to saw him, but he lost a guy that was like really a one, a truly one-dimensional fighter in this day and age. Like you really see fighters that are still one-dimensional in his age. But the guy he lost to had basically no striking in... Some super top or well, some super solid BJJ, or at least he had some good BJJ, but striking was non-existent. Especially you saw in the UFC when people were able to stuff his takedowns and just punch him, always ended in like a thrilling knockout. So he just ended up being easy money for anybody that got takedown defense. And that's what happened to him and um, the guy that beat him. And then he came to UFC and he beat um, Rodriguez. Yeah, Mike Rodriguez just took him down and found success there but it ended up testing positive for some PED so maybe he got a little bit stronger from the PEDs and was able to hold Mike Rodriguez down but then Mike Rodriguez grappling isn't the best so you for the guy that's one dimension on the other side in the grappling aspect a solid striker but grappling wise lots of holes there and you took him down and was able to ground out a decision in that one but going against Doliz Doliz is a better grappler than Arte and I think he's a better striker than Arte I think he's flat out the better fighter in every area in this one I don't think Arte has really any chance of success in this one Anywhere he wants to go in this fight, I just really see like Doliz setting him up on the feet, then mixing it, mixing in the takedown, level changing, taking him down, and then submitting him all within that first round. So in this fight, I have Roman Doliz via first round submission. Now to our next fight, we have in the women's flyweight division, Montana De La Rosa versus Talia Santos. So look at this one right here. Um, De La Rosa versus Santos. So you can do the MMA math. De La Rosa pretty much outclassed Mauro Romero Barella and Talia Santos lost to Mauro Romero Barella in a competitive fight. So based on MMA math, De La Rosa should 
dominate Talia Santos that she's just as good as Mara, like Mara Romero Varela or worse. Like not her, but Talia Santos, her opponents are just as good as T- Mara Romero Varela. Let me just stop saying her name. As good as Varela or worse than Varela because she lost Varela and Rosa just on a completely different level than um, Varela because she just ran right through her. But we're not doing MMA math. So you heard all that stuff. That was just me filling up time. But either way, that was some BS. I was just talking. But as far as looking at this fight, it's like the Rosa, like she was on a good little bit of steam, but now she's like kind of up and down right now, kind of trying to find her way in in the UFC and maybe some women out there are you know the women in her division are figuring out she's kind of her striking isn't the best she wants to take down but you could you know work on that takedown defense and stuff her takedowns and you know and bring her to her into a striking matchup there's lots of chances to beat her or there's the opportunities to beat her or you know just fighting her just looks more feasible like maybe at first like oh this girl's a real dangerous wrestler and I don't really want to deal with that right now let me avoid her but wait a sec I can stand defend her takedown her takedown defense Offense isn't looking as pretty no more. Her grappling isn't looking pretty more on her feet. She looks pretty... She's looking like easy money on the feet, so... Maybe I will take this fight up. Now you start to see more people want to take the fights against De La Rosa, where that past, maybe she was a avoided matchup. But now it's like people saying, like, oh, if I could stop taking down her, her striking's still pretty sloppy. In her last fight against Arajo, I think the striking toes were pretty close, but Arajo was landing all the power and, like, really controlling the pace of the fight, whereas... Rosa was just really just walking forward and throwing punches. Maybe the volume was close, but Arado's punches had much more behind them, and the judges saw that, and pretty much everyone saw that in that fight. Like she might have, I think, snuck one around just by coming forward and throwing punches, but her technique on her feet not the best. And she hasn't really even been that aggressive for her takedowns as of late, and haven't been having that much success with her grappling at all. And I think unless she kind of goes back and works on that, I think it's just gonna play out just like her last fight against Arado, maybe even worse. I think Tyler Santos is bigger than Arajo. Maybe not as technical as Arajo, but pack a little bit more power overall than Arajo. Take down defense is pretty solid. Keep this fight on the feet. And this out strike De La Rosa, who, like I said, striking is in the sharpest and beat her to a decision. So in this one, I got Talia Santos via decision. Now to our next fight we have in our co-main event in the light heavyweight division, Ovin St. Proves our OSP versus Jamal Hill. So looking at this fight right here, um, OSP and Jamal Hill, I see a lot of parallels between them. I think they're both like 6'4". I think OSP had like an 80-inch reach and Jamal Hill has like a 79 inch reach. They kind of, kind of got similar heights, similar reach, similar demeanors, and similar attributes and similar weaknesses. But I would say OSP has always been more well-rounded than Jamal Hill for the most part, especially since his UFC career. I still see Jamal Hill as like a one-dimensional fighter. His grappling is far from the best. Takedown defense is far from the best. I think his boxing is cleaner than St. Prue's and he's a little bit more aggressive than OSP. That's where I see it. In. And also the youth, the youth, the fact that he's more aggressive and has boxing a little bit sharper than OSP's is what I think will lead him out of victory. But if OSP wants to fight a smart veteran fight, take this fight to the ground, get in on the inside, press a little bit, get him to draw his um, power shots, duck under them, like body lock and drag him to the ground. That's your best chance. And then work on top of him. And I think he can get a submission in the first round, second round, I don't know. But yeah, probably first or second round, maybe even third round. But I don't know. With the way OSP fights, especially the age, you got to kind of wonder. Like, you're 37. You kind of fight in the more passive now or waiting on counter. Maybe a little bit more tactical than in the past, but you're fighting on the back foot. And you're fighting a uh, Jamal Hill guy that's an offensive fighter. When those offensive fighters, you get them that, you know, that lead, they really start to turn it up on you. They're going to use that against you. Like, they're not, they're not going to just be hesitant or worried about your counter so much. They're going to just let it rip. Yes, OSP was able to catch um, Alonzo Minifield, but Minifield and Jamal Hill are like two different breeds as far as striking. Like um, Alonzo Minifield, he got power, but his striking technique is far from the best. And I'm not saying Jamal Hill's no world-class strike either. His t- striking definitely needs a lot of work as well, but it's definitely much cleaner, much sharper. He's much longer. And he definitely knows more. His technique is much cleaner than Alonzo Minifield. Both can do a lot of work, but Jamal Hill is striking compared to Alonzo Minifield is night and day. Also, the height and reach, you're not dealing with like a shorter, stockier fighter, you're fighting a guy at your same height can reach you and touch you from the same place you could touch him. And then you're on the back foot. So he can hit you with that jab. He can rip your body. He can throw kicks. And, like, you really just start tagging you from the same distance. So you can't really lean back as much and try to walk him into power shots. He can hit you full power from the same place you can hit him with power. And the fact that, like I said, OSP is going to be on his back foot a lot is one where I feel like he should be a little bit more aggressive or at least meet him in the middle some. So that, like I said, he could be in range to initiate some takedowns. That would be the smarter path. But I just don't see OSP fighting that style. I feel like he's going to be in his back foot too much. 
and that's going to allow Jamal Hill to have that lead and then start to get going. And when he gets going, it's going to be a bad night for OSP. Like, oh, at early on, it's going to be a good filling out process. But once OSP just established like, that he's going to be on the back foot and Jamal Hill's going to be on the front foot for this fight, I think it goes all downhill from that. And I think um, Jamal Hill starts to unload and start to really get find his timing and range with his strikes and puts away OSP in that late stage of the second round. So in this fight, I got Jamal Hill via second round TKO. Now to our main event, we have in the middleweight division, Jack Hermanson versus Marvin Vittori. So this is a pretty interesting matchup right here. Um, just looking at the style wise, both guys are some top notch BJJ. Both guys got some gas tanks on them and both guys bring it. And like, like this fight matches up very well. Just like the Kevin Holland fight would have matched it well. But I think it's fight even more dangerous for Hermanson for the fact that Vittori don't really go out there and be playing. He don't, and also he's not at like, um, yeah, and also he's more physically strong than, I mean, um, Kevin Holland. Experience-wise, Kevin Holland actually has more experience as far as in the UFC than Vittori because Holland been, I think, already fought like five fights this year. And I think Vittori only has like, I don't know, maybe six or seven fights in his whole career inside the UFC, maybe less. So he basically fought your whole career in this one year as far as your UFC career. So, But um, yeah, but Vittori has been in the UFC longer as far as years, but activity, Holland been in, by the way, I just feel like Vittori fights more experienced than Holland. I think Holland's starting to, you know, start to get his groove going on in the UFC. We've seen he's not playing around as much. He's putting people out of there. But Vittori, I think, had already has already been at that point for a good little while now. Especially after seeing out of sign become champion. And since he's coming off with I think he was on an injury or something, he's been looking like a world beater and like looking like a guy that still can, you know, give out of sign some challenge, some work, or you know, maybe give out maybe Somebody that Adesanya, like that can give Adesanya a good fight. Still will lose, probably get stopped this time around, but he could give Adesanya a fight. But we're getting too far off topic, or I'm getting too far off topic. But look at Hermanson versus Vittori. Height, not really no big issue. Even though Hermanson looks like he's 6'4", he's only like 6'1", and I think Vittori's around 6 feet tall or 6'1". So height, not really a big issue. Even though, like I said, Hermanson kind of looks in his frame, makes him look taller than he is. And I already kind of gone around. Both guys are high-level grapplers. Hermanson, if he gets you down and on top of you, we like it's almost a done deal most times. Because his top game is just crazy. Then his ground and pound from and his finishing, um, what's called his you know, his his finishing spirit or whatever you want to call it, or will to finish is just like next to not well top of the line when as far as when he gets on top. Like he gets on top, you get him out hard to escape, and your life gonna get stopped. He keeps up now. And looking at Hermanson, I mean not Vittori, but Vittori did give a takedown to um, Carl Robinson at one point, but Vittori is able to reverse to give on top of him. But um, drifting all over the one with this one because I'm just trying to extend it. But in reality, what I'm trying to go with this one and where I'm going to go with this one and stop beating around the bush and trying to drag it out, I'm leaning to Vittori in this one because I feel like I could drag this out and try to say this and try to say that. But the reality of this thing, I'm leaning to Vittori. I mean, like I said, both world-class BJJ guys, but I think the strength of Vittori, I think he's a better striker than Hermanson. I think he packs more power, and I think he's more durable than Hermanson. Hermanson, like I said, when he's doing all the smashing, he's a beast, and he take you down. He's more creative with his takedowns, and like he has some beauty to his submissions and grappling. But I think Vittori is just as good of a grappler, if not better than Hermanson. Stronger than Hermanson, younger than Hermanson, and can dish it out better than Hermanson as far as overall. I think overall, he's a better striker, better grappler, better wrestler than Hermanson. And like I said, when they start really exchanging power and punches, Hermanson's going to wear it worse than Vittori. Like, when, Hermanson's not a fight. Like, when he started to really unload on him, he crumbles. As we saw with the Cannoneer, we saw with Santos. When Spice starts start to really land, unload him, he starts to crumble. Even against Jacare, he didn't get stopped by Jacare. He was able to survive to the bell. And not like he was just folding over to Jacare. But Jacare, like, really, like, with, like, last fourth and fifth round, Jacare was literally walking with his hands down, ripping him to the body. He would just like give it, he had like really nothing for Jock Ray in like those last two rounds, basically. But I don't know, but yeah, this Glenn Jock Ray just literally walked down with his hands down and ripped him to the body. And that's not gonna work for you against Vittori, a young fighter who's gonna knock on, you know, just give up the first two rounds or willingly give up those first two rounds. But I see if I see it as a back forth competitive fight, but I think Vittori, like I said, is gonna be the heavier striker, be the physically stronger fighter out there, and just as good or not, if not better grappler out there. And really, like, start to pu- push the pace and give it to Hermanson. Put him on the back foot, rip him to the body, rip him up top, slam kicks into his rib cage, and then start to try to use his strength against him and put him on his back and start to wet, 
like you know, weather down the older, sl- slenderer fighter. So I see this fight is competitive through like one and a half rounds, but by like the, ha- the second half of that second round, I started to see Vittori start to you know like his power starts to show effect on Hermanson, and then in that third round, Vittori just started to see a weather op- opponent in front of him, a fighter that's timid and tentative after you know getting feeling the power and the pressure and the pace of her of Vittori. Now I see him put him away in that third round early. So in this fight. I got Marvin Vittori via third round TKO. And that concludes my fight predictions for the main card of UFC Fight Night, Hermanson versus Vittori. And as always, thanks for watching.